you two. Long time no see. Long oh my god, time. super long time. I know. Yeah. We're trying to, you know. I don't know. I don't even know how to answer that question anymore. We're doing I've, fine. I've figured it out. We're, we're we all just say like good and fine, but I think we're all just like grading on a curve right now. And yeah. So it's like doing good, considering. <laughs> Yeah, I think that is kind of how it is. Like, there are things that we're working on that I'm excited about, and that mm. part is great. That's good. That's yeah. exciting. So mm. I try to keep my head there. Positive, yeah. not mm -hmm. negative. You know, good place to be. Good place. Things we can think about. Yeah. But, <laughs> but yeah, we have a few of the projects we've been working on to share today, so that'll be fun. Ooh, very I exciting. Know. We're going to do some shameless plugging. Yeah, awesome. Yeah. Um, yeah, so we're super excited that you could come and join us. And also, it was nice finding a really beautiful picture, uh, like portrait of you to share in our <laughs> promo. That was a really <laughs> lovely picture. I feel like that's like the only selfie that's on my Instagram, maybe. So <laughs> it, it is one of very few because <laughs> I did look. Um, I was like, I'm pretty sure this is gonna be the one, but if she what, buy her art in a way that you could see the art, because you have another one where like the new show is up, but you look oh, really yeah. small, and the show is also really small. But I was like, oh, I don't think this is like the best representation of like herself or the work. Um, yeah, for potentially people that don't know the work. So, well, it's funny. Yeah. I was I was talking with uh, mutual pals Katie Bruce and. Uh, I, after I like took that picture, I was like, oh, Katie, because I just dyed my hair. I'm like, look at this picture. And she was like, why don't you post pictures on Instagram? I'm like, I don't know. It's weird. I just, I never have. She's like, put that one up there. Just do it. So that's all, that's all Katie Bruce is doing. <laughs> Love it. Well, she posts some <laughs> great pictures of herself. So. She does. Yeah. She's, she's queen of that. <laughs> yeah, she is. I'm sorry if I glasses. start to actually like drip sweat. I'm wearing oh, like a sweet sweater. like no, it's like a cashmere sweater, and it our wood stove is made this room like 29 degrees, wow. so it's really, really hot in here. Oh um, it's kind of like this is an inappropriate wardrobe choice, but you know whatever. But we got the turtleneck memo, so that's nice. Yeah, I did. Kyle, not. I got the yeah. 30 degree like living room memo. <laughs> Smart. So. Well, uh, I know that like you, you know, you are aware of the program, but I will explain it just in case there are people that don't. Mm -hmm. uh, this is Flat Files, and it is a sort of choice that was made by Kyle and I out of the pandemic, but I think it's something we've very quickly fallen in love with and are going to continue to do in some capacity. And essentially it is a conversation with a guest, someone that we usually know or have worked with, although, you know, that might start Perhaps changing. Strangers. And uh, it's a show and tell of artwork. Uh, today, we're going to be showing some of our own work, yeah. uh, but there will be an additional share. It sort of started as a way for us to comb through our flat files and just reminisce about experiences that we've had and share work that we love by people that we think are doing really great things and we invite our guests to do the same in whatever capacity works for them you know everybody's life is very different some people are in studios or spaces where they don't have access to all of the work that maybe they actually own and some people uh, do and so we are happy it's a very like free form go with the flow kind of um, experience and yeah we talk about sometimes how the work is made and sometimes we just talk about loving it without a whole lot of explanation beyond that <laughs> but uh, yeah we would love for you to introduce yourself and talk a little bit about what you do and then we'll dive right in totally yeah so my name is Michelle McKinnon um, I think I met you two back in I want to say like 2013 perhaps I when, think when did you have the studio downtown in Kingston. Oh, yeah. So, yeah, 2013. Yeah. yeah. That was our yeah. first, like, official face-to-face -face meeting. That was where I did a residency at Sparkbox um, and had a sinus infection, like, a really severe one the entire time. It was <laughs> good times there. Um, yeah. But since, um, yeah, I felt like such a terrible guest because I was just in a miserable mood, but a sinus infection will totally do that to you. Um, 
No, but I, uh, I since, um, I am an artist and educator working in Cornerbrook, Newfoundland uh, at the moment. Uh, I have been teaching um, at York University. I've been working with Queen's University, Algoma University, and have kind of temporarily landed at Memorial University of Newfoundland at the Grenfell campus, and uh, where I teach drawing and painting. And uh, I think arts education is just as important as kind of my other half of my love, which is uh, uh, making art as well. Um, I'm a drawer and a painter. And uh, I have been working on a lot of series of knit drawings most recently, as well as some little tiny portraits that I call pandemic portraits that have kind of been a result of um, isolation and the pandemic and whatnot and being at home. Um, and I live a pretty transient lifestyle. Now, mind you, with the pandemic, this is probably the um, the most quiet it's been in the whole moving front. Uh, but because of that, I love that you preface that some people have their work around them and some people don't because I have most of my things actually in storage in Ontario. So um, it's just a couple of things that I've been collecting here and there, but usually the things that we collect, we really love. And then we'll put in storage as we go and collect new things. So eventually there's going to be this like amazing collection that comes out of Ontario. But for now, I just have like a few pieces with me that I love a lot. And I'm just so excited to share today. Awesome. Amazing. I think what's really fun is that we had gotten like an application from you for one of our awards before we saw your work. And I remember some feedback that we gave was that we didn't have context for scale because when we went to see your studio, we were like, oh my God, these are humongous drawings. Like we could, it was really a very different experience being up front and close and personal with your work and with, you know, in comparison to seeing it on a screen and really yeah. feeling the detail and the time and yeah, the scale because they were giant. And when you came here, you worked on, you basically drew, like maybe it was two portraits was you two. worked on? Yeah. That were the size, like the literal size of the walls in the studio. Mm -hmm. And then now you've been doing these portraits that are bitty, like bitty. this. Yeah. <laughs> but they still have all of this like detail and character and like just super conscious considerations. I've been thoroughly enjoying this series. Thank you. And it was really um, the moving when I started moving around for work so much because I work contractually. Um, I normally don't know where I'm going to be every four months. Um, so to be able to do large works has been really restrictive lately. So I have adapted and gone into small works. I haven't made anything much bigger than like 22 by 30 in, in years now when I was working at this nine foot scale the entire time but it's just not sustainable with a with a moving around kind of environment so lately everything I've been doing is about like like nine by five inches and that's as big as it gets and it was a really big challenge to do exactly what you just said with um bringing the life that I was getting in into these large ones down into these small ones and for me that took a shift from working in graphite into working in watercolor I actually did a few graphite ones first and they just kind of fell flat and as soon as I switched to watercolor I'm like okay this is this is where we need to sit right now oh I love that that you like yeah. had to reconsider material last Definitely. week we were talking with our friend Carmen and she's kind of in the opposite place to you she just mm -hmm. moved and she had this giant studio space so she's mm -hmm. actually been able to work That's really really stuff. big like yeah. like nine by whatever um mm -hmm. and she's an abstract painter so it's oh. been so great for her because she gets to have that energy that's so hard to put into these smaller scales yeah. uh, but I love that you you just you saw that the shift in material was what would actually give you the advantage for that size we have for keep forgetting to like change our phone setting so that it like goes into like um, low battery mode so it goes all dark oh, yeah. which is why I'm always like leaning in and pressing the screen um, oh yeah <laughs> you know just like stroking your hair or whatever oh <laughs> yeah you know that's what's happening off screen <laughs> yeah, um, um, yeah well that's I'm also sure. I like mm -hmm. I yeah I, I don't know if you have any of the little portraits that you'll show Ooh, okay yeah. good. Um, I, would, I would love to see them so yeah. we always uh, let the guest pick who gets to go guest first. choice so do you want us to go first or do you want to go first? 
Oh, um, you go first. Okay. You go first. Yeah. Let's start with uh, the, the print. Or do you want to start with the other thing and then do print in the middle? Print first, okay. We're going to do print. Oh, hopefully the light is not terrific. We will see if... Uh... Oh. So we've shown like quite a lot of etchings on flat files, which, you know, I have like such a love for. But something that we don't talk about that often is dry point, which is you know, just a different type of intaglio that has a similar principle, but such a different textural feel. Mm -hmm. So we picked this print um, by Jan Winton, who was one of our professors at Queens. And uh, she was paint and print. Paint and print, yeah. Big time painter, um, very loose, very gestural. Her paintings are amazing. And I, I really love this print because I think that it has a lot of that sort of abstract, like I was saying with Carmen's, like energy to it. But it's also this like kind of tornado, which I think we can all kind of like uh, sympathize with this imagery right now. <laughs> Just feels Very like fitting. everything's a bit of a tornado. <laughs> but it also has such nice qualities of dry point. Kyle's much better at describing dry point than I am. So um, I'll let him kind of explain what... I mean when I say that. Oh, it's a little dusty. It's been COVID times for a little while. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Who cares about cleaning? <laughs> uh, dry point differs from traditional etching in uh, the, the major way is how you prepare the matrix. So with a dry point, you have a flat sheet of copper. Um, it's like not that crazy thick. And with dry point, what the premise is, is that you are manually making all of your marks. So you're taking a very sharp needle or you're taking like a gouge or a blade and you're physically just digging into this copper and you're either parting the metal with that or you're using an engraving tool to remove the metal and then you ink that up and you print it as opposed to hard ground etching which is you create a layer of resist and some acid does the cutting away for you. And so the dry point what happens like when you cut into that metal you create a groove and that groove is what holds the ink and so when you cover the plate in ink and you buff it down um, it prints just these grooves with dry point because you're not actually often removing the metal but rather you're just kind of parting it and you're creating burrs uh, ink will collect around these edges where like you can't physically wipe Look at the seed and, and it bottom. has the characteristic of the lines tend to be not as sharp as a traditional etching but instead are a bit on the softer side and maybe a bit fuzzy. And dry point is like a very lovely way to work, but like there are some things that like it struggles to do, like such as really sharp lines, just because of the nature of it. And it offers a really wonderful like tactile experience. Well, I don't know if tactile is the correct word. It's a little bit though. When you're trying to like draw a tornado, like that yeah. fuzziness really helps to draw that tornado, such as like the dry point, a dry point uh, of like a bear or a fox or fur would also look very lovely because of its soft qualities. Yeah. I yeah. also think that it like creates these really rich blacks or, you know, whatever color ink you're using in Jan's case, it's the blacks that are in these sort of punches like throughout the piece that those burrs are like collecting that ink more successfully than trying to do a bunch of lines or a bunch of little dots in a condensed space to yeah. create like a flat. Like even if you were to aqua tint this, which essentially gives you like a nice black surface, um, it's still a really different kind of quality than, than with the dry point. So yeah, that's our first share. Yeah. I so love it. Jan went in print. Yeah. It's, it's and in our collection. So would that be, uh, that would be two layers then with the red in there? Is that a second, yeah, separate layer? Yeah, it's beautiful. I feel like this does really speak to our kind of like strange tumultuous time right now really well. Um, I love that. I have very little experience with dry point, except that I've, um, I've done a little bit of it with, um, you know, the, the mini print presses, the little 3D printed ones. Yep. So I've done it with that on Plexi before. And that's, that's my, that's my extent of it. It wasn't a very good print, but it was, it was a, it was a neat kind of first foray into it. That's awesome. I've yeah. never used one of, well, that's not a lie. I've like used one at a conference once, but I've never like 
you know, I the conference one. was a little quick. Really? Yeah. Well, uh, Andrew, my partner, is the uh, the print professor at Grunfill. And so he we have a 3D printer there. We did a mini print press. And he actually had like a whole mini print press project uh, that he's working on and sharing with rural communities in Newfoundland um, to make kind of printmaking more accessible in these rural areas where That's students so don't cool. have the opportunity to try. Yeah, it's super, super cool. Um, so that's where I got to try that. It can do dry point and it can do um, relief. That's awesome. Yeah. Oh my gosh, I love that. It's super, super cool. Are they expensive to make, like in terms of materials for the 3D printer? Uh, once you once you have everything there with a 3D printer, I, I mean, don't quote me on this. I want to say it's around 100 to 150 okay. ish, depending on the material that I'm putting in. Now, I think that ours is um, a little reinforced with the material. I don't know if Georgia is still in this chat, but if she is, she's worked with Andrew on the mini print press before. So mm -hmm. she might even actually have a better idea of what it is. Uh, but yeah. Yeah, I don't know. So, that like, relatively. Is. Yeah, relatively affordable. But I love that as an idea for like, especially schools, like we did a project a few years ago. Well, I mean, it's been quite a while now where we had um, high school teachers for their, one of their PD days come mm -hmm. to the studio and work with us on two affordable, low toxicity, like accessible forms of printmaking mm -hmm. that they could bring into the classrooms because it's technically part of the curriculum in an art class. We were trying to get like a sort of a link between either the English department or the science department and the art department, but it didn't seem like cross curriculum was like maybe the most accessible thing, or I feel like there was like a bureaucratic, bureaucratic kind of block there that we don't really know because we're not, you know, working in a school on a regular basis. But we thought mm -hmm. it would be cool if like a science teacher explained exactly what was happening like with the materials we were doing like some kitchen litho with them yeah and we were like oh there's so much going on here from a science perspective that we don't even fully know like the, all of the nitty-gritty about um and it could be an interesting link between those two departments but anyways that didn't really work out and only our teachers came but yeah <laughs> it was still really fun I love that though that's such a great idea because I think that in a lot of schools the arts programs are the things that are a little uh a little more neglected and to have that link between science and art I love that I think that's an awesome idea yeah I thought it would be fun too yeah so, didn't work out. so anyways <laughs> that was our first share yeah. Now, okay. Throw it over to me. I'm just going to go on the theme that we were actually just talking about my partner. I'm going to share one of his prints, actually, okay, because sweet. he's a printmaker. Um, so this is uh, by Andrew Testa. Um, this is a, okay, this is a photogram um, on an, and it was exposed to an ortholitho plate. Okay. This is me going from memory. Um, so, uh, so essentially what this was is when we first moved to Newfoundland, um, we wanted to, well, I mean, Andrew specifically wanted to really get accustomed to a uh, place and to become familiar with a place that we had never been to before. This was back in 2016. And so he went outside onto our lawn, which was in this beautiful area in Mount Moriah, which is a teeny weeny little town. And he just went out and collected all the things and tried to get one of each thing that was in the in the lawn. So this is one of the weeds and it was taped down to that glass surface exposed and then put onto the ortho with a plate. Wow, it's so nice. I love yeah. how moody it is because of the Very. background. Mm -hmm. The little um, rectangle. Is yeah. That just, what is that? So the white one is tape. And okay. the bottom one is also actually, it's black masking tape, but he has a larger series of these. And so they relate to scale so that you can compare between each of them as to the scale of the object. Oh, that is cool. So a photogram is yes. when you take the paper outside and you put the, ex the, the sensitive face up and you put stuff on top of it and then plate a glass on top. And then so, you just let the sun do the work for you? 
this one wasn't done outside. I know that this one was done in the studio. It was exposed in the exposure, in the exposure unit. And so when he's doing these, because uh, it, it has to be completely black, he's, um, he's actually going in in the dark and he creates little um, kind of boundaries, like tape boundaries. So you can see like the black all the way around the outside is mm -hmm. actually a tape boundary. So he can feel around as to what the composition is going to be. And so he lines everything up the best that he can. And then you you can see like the background has so much noise in it and it's I know, all I really like that. Yeah, that's all just dirt from outside, like other things that he picked up. So uh and there's like things like beard hairs and like things like that in it as well. Um so yeah, so then he would arrange that all um on the exposure unit and then hope for the best and uh do the exposure and take it out. And I mean He's a pretty particular person in general, so he's pretty good at like figuring out where things are going to go. But I love that kind of um, that sense of just like having to rely on on touch and on feel and those kind of constraints that you set upon yourself to create the composition. I love that. So, That's so great. So yeah. why is it so, like so? It's super important that it's that it's like super dark in the dark room because it, mm -hmm. like any bit of white light would cause those blacks to be slightly grayer yes exactly wouldn't pick up on it as much so it has to be completely now i'm coming at this on um i'm giving you secondhand knowledge because i'm not an expert I mean, on this but an awful lot of this program is because we're usually not talking about our own work there are times where i'm like i hope that i didn't completely falsify the information of this. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. so this is the one, I started with this one because I'm most confident about this one. After <laughs> this, we're just going into the dark on what's going on in the world. Well, I mean, there's parallels there to the way this one's created. We're just going to go around and hope for the best. Exactly. I agree with you, Leanne, that like the idea of creating composition with touch and feel is such an interesting and like beautiful way to just, I don't know, I guess be like allow yourself to explore your materials and trust your intuition. And mm -hmm. yeah, it's just such a different way to approach making for me. I mean, it might not be for a lot of other people, but for me, that would be a really different way of like tackling a project. And I really like that. Same. I'm super careful and composed and uh, I'm such a planner. And so, uh, and, and, and the funny thing is as a person, he is too, um, because I don't see this composition really happening at random at all because he is creating that framework to put everything around. So it's like, it, it, it's, it's a work and composition that feels chaotic, but is actually created through structure, which is really yeah. neat. Well, and I think like, you know, I do think that you can feel a composition. Like I, yeah. I really believe that that it makes a lot of sense. Like if you know the boundaries, you can, you will know where, like where the balance is off by like your gut and the way you can feel the space and you can mm -hmm. feel that negative space. You can feel the positive space, Definitely. but yeah, it's a really cool, cool process. Yeah, for sure. Right. What do you, what do y'all have next? All right. So the next one is a collaborative project. We just got these yesterday. That's why we were like, Oh, we'll do them. So a friend of ours recently started um, like a coffee roasting company, mm. coffee, coffee company. Well, let's actually. And uh, he asked if we would participate in a like limited run where we would design labels, which is something we've never really, I mean, we've done like a couple label type things before, but Nothing really like this. And it was so enjoyable. The coffee smells amazing. Yeah. Um, it's called Vortex. And so we just got these yesterday. We were really excited because we were like, oh my gosh, it's a very, real product. It's very strange to have your artwork on a product. Oh. On a thing that you didn't make for some fake art gallery show. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Are you both holding your respective designs yes. right now? Yeah, I'm yeah. if I designed this. <laughs> I was going to say hilarious. it would be, that was a highly unlikely question, but yes. <laughs> and uh, another seen... friend of ours and uh, uh, like a wonderful illustrator, I know we've shown his work before. He's also been on the show, uh, Carl Weens. Carl Weens. He yeah. also created one. So it's the three of us. We're like a little trio of local peeps. 
that got to participate mm -hmm. in this project and it's just it's been such a treat and like such a pleasure and I think that um Ryan and Ryan if you watch this later and the other person that is working with you I'm so sorry I do not remember the partner's name and I took no initiative to research that before this um so there is another person involved in this project and I don't remember who they are um which is awful but our friend Ryan when he came and talked to us about this the idea of making the artwork but also just like the idea of the copy which is called vortex so there's an area in the county that is called the Marysburg vortex and allegedly it has similar properties to the Bermuda Triangle <laughs> right interesting <laughs> There's nothing other than it's a geographical area between three places. <laughs> but the South Marysburg Vortex is like from kind of like that early 1800s to like early 1900s myth and lore. So like when Canada was like first founded, Picton shows up on a lot of early maps because it was one of the major ports and harbors at the time around like when Kingston was getting settled in Toronto and Hamilton. Um, and subsequently, there was lots of fighting that happens over Lake Ontario and a lot of people traveled through here. And so like myth kind of became the like, the South Marysburg vortex was like where like ships would just kind of get sucked up and like wrecked and destroyed. And it's a really weird folklore story that's arrived in our area. Yeah, like yeah. you can totally research it, but yeah, so a little, a little bit of the background of this is kind of that storyline. Um, and I think they have like postcards that they've been giving out that kind of talk about that. And also just the, the idea of a vortex in general. Um, so what's been really interesting about Ryan's kind of feeling or, or th <laughs> thoughts about this coffee was that he didn't want it to just be about making coffee. He wanted it to be like a conversation starter. It, he wanted it to like, be like a celebration of like creative thought and energy and voices and I don't know Ryan is a filmmaker and so I feel like that kind of film energy like where there's a storyline and a narrative that comes into what you bring to the world is like wrapped up in this coffee and so it's been, it was just really fun to have him here and like talking to him about this project and how he wanted us to be involved and hearing the like the place that he's coming from for this coffee company was just it was just really fun and exciting and you could feel his enthusiasm for it so it's been an absolute treat to like work with him and participate in it and the oh coffee is delicious i haven't tried any of these if i'm being like t fully honest but i there's another one that they have and i have been drinking that regularly that was going to be my first question is okay but how's the coffee but yeah. um my... this one's decaf so Oh, you don't yeah, I know. I love you, <laughs> Kyle. And this is probably great, but just it's, it's just not going to give me what I want, which is full volume caffeine. That's what I go for. Um, yeah. I do have a question. Did you find like, so first of all, did you design, you designed all of these for these bags specifically? Yes? No. So no, I just, okay. I had this, I, had, I made a print uh, maybe in September. So yeah. this is um, so like I'm very meticulous. I think so in Photoshop. So like the print only ended up to, to this stage where I made the digital file. And yeah. I have yet to print it. I got busy. I printed lots of other things for other people, cardboard boxes, and you know, figuring out what to do with the residency program. Uh, so I have yet to print it though. But when Ryan approaches about this, it's like yeah. So it's about this idea about like this vortex and. Uh, we kind of selected works that we thought were like kind of maybe mine vortex I adjacent for this project specifically. So mine was pre-existing. Hers was one that she made specifically for the bag, though. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. you have an instance of each. And like Chrissy, did you find like did that like did it feel like more restrictive or more freeing? Think like making something that you're knowing is going on a product. I think that because I was like totally jazzed up about Ryan's like vibes and I 
I hate. I will, I have watched a lot of Love Island um, in my <sighs> life. I was going to say recently, but you know, whatever. This like where my heart and my skin. It's a thing that I watch. I, it's garbage, but I love it. Um, totally. And they say vibes a lot, and every time they do it, it makes me feel a little like, so I, I you know, whatever. It's rubbing off on me, apparently. So, but anyways, his like enthusiasm and excitement about the project made me really excited about the project and also fully trusting of his like plan and execution and that put me at ease really uh this isn't necessarily something that I've ever done and not something that like I've ever been like pursuing like working on package imagery uh mm -hmm. but he was like just just follow your gut do whatever is interesting to you pick whatever colors you want. There was just a lot of mutual trust and that made the project yeah. very enjoyable. So, oh, that's awesome. Yeah. I love yeah. that. Very cool. Yeah. So that's our second share. All right. Um, I realized I, I put out like many options and now I'm like, okay. oh, so I know it's so hard. Um, okay. Uh, the next one that I think I'll share then is this one. Ooh. Ooh. Ooh, so this is where we get to um, me not exactly knowing what I'm talking about a whole lot. Um, but this is um, artist and curator and writer and just overall lovely person, Emily Critch. Uh, so she graduated from the Grenfell Visual Arts Program. Um, I didn't teach Emily, but um, I was around when she was in her graduating year. And... Um, she is just an amazing artist from Cornerbrook. Uh, this is actually a work where I believe she did it. It was either in her fourth year or the year after. Now I'm not 100% sure. Um, but there's this beautiful area about half an hour from Cornerbrook called Bottle Cove. And it's in Lark Harbor. And it's just this like lovely little cove that has like so many lovely like rocks and things like that. And anyway, this is a collection of things like more like garbage like things though that she picked up from the cove um did exposures of and then screen printed wow this is so yeah. nice it's so subtle it feels yeah. like soft even though it's a flat image it definitely does and the color palette is just like drool worthy to me like that was like like beyond everything else in the work like the very first thing that I saw like you know when you just connect to a piece immediately because of one particular thing like the color palette just made me like melt I thought it was beautiful it is is there like a soft gradient in the background or is the peachy. no I think yeah, I think that that's that? the light but yeah this is there's like a peachy area here and then it goes to like a pale cream up here. Okay. 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 Yeah. yeah. And there's all these different blue, like that. Yeah. Dark... Wait, was it that Payne's gray? It's it is like it looks like a nice Payne's gray. Yeah, it looks like two variants of it. Um, but we have like this like nice net. It looks like maybe like a fishing net. Yeah. It could be. Um, I've never really used peach in my work up until like the past yeah. really like two years, and I've discovered mm -hmm. it. And I think it's because Chrissy paints in it. And we've been doing work together but like i've really i've really fallen hard for like the peach and the soft pastel colors yeah actually and i thought that these colors kind of like reminded me of your work a little bit chrissy mm -hmm. with like and again it's from that peach from that softness yeah so i thought you might enjoy this one i really but, like it i also yeah. so the shapes that are kind of the gray they're more well, they look flat. I don't know. We'll see when, like, you send an actual photo of this. Because yeah. there's been a few pieces where I'm like, oh, looks different than I thought it was going to. But is there internet. Like an overlay of another gray? Am I yes. seeing that correctly? You oh, are. Okay. Yes. It looks a little bit like Yeah. Texture. Gosh. There's nice. so many gorgeous textures in this. Oh, the netting is really nice when you get close. Wow. Yeah. So is that just exposed directly onto the screen? You, you know think? what? I think so. I'm not 100% sure, but I think so. Yeah, I know you can do that. I've never done yeah. it. I've been really curious about it, though. But yeah, definitely. Yeah, well, flat things. Safe safe things. Um, definitely. So they're going to break a screen. Or oh, my goodness. Or the exposure unit, yeah. the bigger <laughs> issue. <laughs> oh, that's 
really nice. The size yeah. is nice too. Oh, it's lovely. And this one sits um, in the corner of my living room, like where when I'm sitting and just relaxing on the couch, got my feet up. It's like right there in front of me. And it's just so calming to look at. I love it. I like that they're both, both pieces so far have been about place. So they like, have been collecting and... little found elements of an environment and then exposing them to a surface so that you can get this kind of memory of it locked in there. Yeah, and I think that um, with all of our moving around and traveling, I think that both Andrew and I, because I must say this isn't just my collection, this would be like Andrew and I's collection, but we really get drawn to pieces that do explore place and we both like our hearts just live in Newfoundland so like whenever we find works that remind us specifically of places like I like Bottle Cove is probably my my favorite place I've been to in the world I just adore it and when I found out that that work was about Bottle Cove I was like oh no wonder I was drawn to it so much oh, we really need to go to Newfoundland someday so, it's a glorious so, place that was supposed to be our trip this year oh no like, way it was like we had been like trying to like go for a couple years and I was like well yeah. let's just go we weren't gonna go to the southern graphics conference and so oh, yeah. we we're gonna have some money to actually do something and I was like well COVID yeah definitely oh my gosh well keep it up on the top of your list for when travel starts again because it it's oh, absolutely I don't think magical overseas right? <laughs> <laughs> no I know right Canada, <laughs> Canada, that's Canada yeah explore explore our home yeah all right, third share. Okay, we have yeah. to do a little like shifting here. Oh, Kyle's gonna have to bear with us as we transition to a different location, sort of. Do -do -do. Ooh, change of scenery. I know. Oh, my God, this Kyle. Okay. Oh, the whole setup okay. with lights. <gasps> Tilt this down, but I need to figure out how to do that. So we wanted to show the mini gallery, the new oh. mini gallery setup. I um, it. So we, you know, honestly, I kind of thought we were like done with craft sales. Um, but now that we haven't done any, I'm realizing that I actually miss them. <laughs> Uh, I like last year I was like, oh, craft sales, like I'm over it. I'm over packing our car. I'm over sitting, you know, in a location for hours. And then, yeah, this year, just not having them at all. I, I've been just really missing it, missing the connection with the other crafters that we're super good friends with. And we, you know, don't mm -hmm. always have an opportunity to hang out with each other because we're so busy trying to make things and make a tiny store that we travel around with and yeah. also just the people that support small makers and are so excited to be there and like you know just talking about what you're doing and it's it is like a nice environment and it is a nice holiday environment so we don't have that this year we did some online ones they were very different experiences and now we're doing basically an online version at our place. So it's, we're a little like late to the game. We know we should have been on this like last month. Um, but it, it just took a long time to like get the website set up, take a bunch of pictures, oh. blah, blah, blah. But this is our little mini gallery. We uh, eventually want to have like a bunch of these outside in front of the studio oh. and like have kind of like a rolling exhibition. Right now, they're just like printouts of the work at scales oh. that are drastically not what they are in real life, which is very, very fun because it's like you get to see what it would be like if the winter adventure was the size of a, you know, presumably like eight foot by who knows what size wall. Yeah. So we sort uh. of did um, a little Kyle section here and then we always sell work by another East Coaster, but Halifax, um, mm -hmm. Jacob Ralph. He has a studio called Floating Worlds, and he does a bunch of silkscreen work. They're really, like, punchy and fun, and... So, like, that's those, like, cats in the back wall. Yeah. And then Jenna and I did these, like, pop-ups, which I showed last week, um, and they resulted in a bunch of 
paper cut animals. Yep, yeah, we are good. And we made like small collages with them. So we have them in the show there. We, I only have a few of each of these, but so we wanted to make it so that some of the work was kind of exclusive to this experience. So like the Cloy stuff, which is the stuff with Jenna and I and Jacob's stuff is kind of special to our craft sale mm -hmm. um, scene. And so we brought those into this along with, you know, some of our old favorites by Kyle and I. And, and set up a little mini version in here. And then we have like a, an online version that has more work um, from Jacob and Kyle and I as well. But there's only so many walls in here. And we, uh, we only had this much plexiglass just hanging around our studio and this much foam core. So this is where we're at right now. But I feel like the future of mini galleries is going to be a good one for 2021. I'm very excited. That's so lovely. I love this so much. It's, you know, there is something really special about a tiny space. <laughs> there, there really is. It's so sweet. Like, it's just like, it, when it's like seeing the work so differently too, like this. And I love seeing it all together. And there's so many possibilities to be able to per put work together that like, perhaps you typically wouldn't be able to do. And like, the ways that you can curate things. There's actually a tiny gallery at Grenfell too. We have like the tiny sustainable house and you can create work to put in there as well. And uh, usually a student takes that on every year. I don't know what's gonna happen this year with uh, with the school being closed and everything, but um, I've always loved that initiative and the small works are just wonderful. Yeah, well, we originally set this up because we were um, doing uh, the installs for the Drake Devonshire in Wellington, mm. they have yeah. cabinets there that are quite small. Like when you walk in the front door off to your right hand side, they have two built in glass cabinets that have three shelves mm. each. Yeah. Like kind of this like weird, I feel like it was maybe an afterthought in design. They never really understood what to do with it because they, they're not like a retail space. It's like you walk into the front desk and there just happens to be two display cabinets in the wall. Yes. And so we've been st we've been sticking in like art exhibitions in there for the past couple. Well, we I stopped a while ago. We stopped for a while, but it was about like a two year kind of deal. Mm -hmm. And we made these foam core walls. So like I have like five more sets of these. Yeah. So like they fit perfectly into the glass cabinet. So when you look at the glass mm -hmm. cabinet, it was like a whole little tiny mini gallery. And they've been sitting in storage collecting dust for a while. A couple of but years I now. think the part of it or like for me, a bit of the block was this idea that work had to be made specifically for this scale. Mm -hmm. And that can be fun, you know, a little bit, but also not very fun at all. And there's so many works that are really exciting and interesting. And I was like, oh, it kind of is a bit of a bummer that these walls are so little. And then when we were thinking about this, I was like, how are we going to do this? And Kyle's like, well, we could just print the work out. You know, it doesn't yeah. have to be the, the actual original work. We can just put the work up and then the original work can be on site and people can like send us a message and come see it or can be on the website and they can look at it there. I was like, oh yeah, that just like, like exploded the options of what this could look like, which was really Oh my exciting. gosh, yeah. And you said it's going to sit outside too? Yeah. yeah, I love that for this time too, because I feel like, I feel like it is getting a little exhausting and people are getting um, very kind of like worn out on online exhibitions too. And I love this as an alternative space that people can come and take a look at the work and like engage with it in a different way than online. I mean, online's awesome too, if you can't make it out to the county or anything, but to be able to actually have an opportunity to safely go and check out work and see it that way and then and then look into other pieces more. I just think that that's wonderful. I love the consideration of lighting too, by the way. <laughs> you know, you can't, you can't hate a twinkle light. It's really hard. There's, it's, re it's impossible, I think. They're, they're so satisfying. <laughs> They're so that from here, like when they're really small, they look like little gallery directed lights. Two, yeah. when they're tiny <laughs> I love it no it's uh it's been really it's it's been really fun yeah, so yeah I that's our third it. that's our third share the holiday mini gallery so we're gonna put it up after mm -hmm. we're done talking to you and then it will Yay. be up uh, Monday to Saturday 
11 to 4. I mean, I think that it's still sunny at 4. We'll see. If it gets dark, we might pull it down earlier. Um, yeah. But it's lit. Exactly. It is lit. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Since I pulled out one too many works, your choice. Do I show something that is done by me or I have another artist as well? Well, let's, if you have the, um, the portraits, I would love to I see do. those. And then if there's time, we can, we could see the other one as well. Totally. So I have three here. These are three that weren't up. I, I recently had these at uh, the rooms in St. John's, which is the Provincial Art Gallery. Um, they're still very safely wrapped up. So I just haven't like taken them out. So I have three to show that weren't up at the rooms. Um, so I can show them quickly. There's this one of Charlotte May Hopton, who is an artist and arts administrator in St. John's. We have one of Jane Walker, and she is an artist. She's a writer, curator, Jordan, overall you, lovely like, person. Can you hold those closer? Like I, I oh, this yes. is, I don't think that like, it's very hard to describe how well these are made. Thank you, like, and they they're itty bitty. They are small watercolors. And like, it is incredible how much detail you pack into a very small little tiny amount of space with, with watercolors, yeah. which are made by a brush. Yes, a really tiny brush. <laughs> this is Gerard Curtis, who is a art historian and professor at uh, at Grenfell. Can you talk about the selection of the people for these portraits? I can. Yes. Oh, right. That's too low. Um, so I, when I first started these, I started with a self portrait uh, because I kind of didn't really know what to do at the time. I was very exhausted and not feeling creative with the pandemic. And I'm so, hard eyes and gorgeous. Oh, so, you know, I agree. Uh, I do. so lovely. <laughs> um, so I was just exhausted, and I wanted to create something that. I don't want to say didn't matter, but like that I could just do in a relaxed manner. And so um, I did a little self portrait and I decided to title it, uh, title it with, um, well, I don't remember the date, but it was in May and it was the day my flat iron broke. And I have really wild hair without a flat iron. So it was a very significant moment to me um, and memorable. So I, uh, the ne I, I just enjoyed doing that process so much that the next day I woke up and I was like, you know, Andrew, I'm going to paint you now. And he's like, okay. So I, I, I did a quick watercolor of him. And then I started setting myself some time constraints um, that I would give myself one hour to draw it and two hours to paint it. And that was it. And it just to do them very quickly. I'll hold okay. up another one. So it's not the same thing. Um, and so then from there, I, again, woke up the next day, wanted to do it again. So I talked to my friend, Larry, um, who is an artist uh, working in Newfoundland as well, and also teaches at Grenfell in the textiles program. And uh, I told them and they sent me a photo and I started working on that one, did the same constraints. And then I just started going and going. And it first started with friends who were in the arts because I mean, who do you draw first? You go to your friends for, for little kind of pandemic selfies because they're comfortable sending them. Right. Uh, and then it just turned into, um, looking at artists and arts related folks in Newfoundland and Labrador and um, just working on them. Cause I feel like we're, we're kind of all in this and artists are all in this strange place right now. And I just wanted to kind of, to highlight the work that people were doing. I love that. It's so beautiful. Yeah. It's such a nice project and the time constraints are like seem intense to me. Um, but that's <laughs> three hours. Like, <laughs> Yeah, this is so this, great. This was actually, I think, the third, no, the fourth one that I did. So this was a very early on one. Um, yeah, the time constraints were kind of, they were there because I wanted to start a project that didn't take a long time to complete, something that had a tangible start and end time that wouldn't take me into another day that I could just sit down and do and finish and then keep going. And that was a really good way to get started again when I was having such a problem working on things. And uh, it's just kind of, I've stayed with that because now I just, I like being able to do it within that time. And I mean- It's incredibly impressive that you do this within three hours. Thank you. Some of them take like the fastest one. One was just working for me one day and I did it an hour and a half. And then 
mind you, there's another one with um, actually another Flat Files artist, uh, Emily Pittman. I painted Emily Pittman's and Oh, it, I'm so happy it was it was Emily when I was doing this because she was so understanding. But I just could not get her portrait right, no matter what I tried. And so I I had to actually get her to send me another image because I could not do it. And she's she's just so lovely. And she was like, I totally understand. Sometimes there are houses that just don't want to be painted and I have to <laughs> choose another one. And I was like, She's so great. Oh, you're so kind, Emily. <laughs> no, I, yeah. I mean, that's, I feel like the, the sentiment in this is similar to the sentiment we have with flat files. It's just, I think that there's so many people doing really beautiful things and it's hard to, for all of us to have the same level of presence, you know, really anywhere. Yeah. And yeah. to find a way to, share work about not just what you're doing but about what other people are doing is really so enjoyable for us and we really love it and I think that this is kind of you know like a, a really committed expression of a similar <laughs> <laughs> I mean they were happening daily for a little bit and I did find like it was a really nice way to just connect with people again like you yeah. said like in a time when it was really difficult to connect with people and uh, so I was doing them daily. It's taken a back seat to teaching this semester, not going to lie, because I mean, it's remote teaching has been a lot. And uh, that's okay. I think that part of this project too, is about being okay with not being productive. And yeah. that was a really important thing too to be able to sit with that idea of productivity and know that you don't have to be creating a masterpiece right now you can be soft with yourself and take your time and not do things and I think that was just as important as actually doing them I love that and that is such a good message it's a hard one to uh abide by but a good message it is yeah we have like maybe five minutes <gasps> if you if you feel like you can squeeze the I can I can okay the last one that I wanted to show because I really love this piece uh so this is a work by Jerry Robson, who is an artist in uh, New Brunswick. So um, this piece is interesting because of, like I was talking about with the transient lifestyle and not having a lot of art here. As you can see, this is just, um, this is a photocopy just on printer paper. Um, oh. So I, Jerry Robson was part of the Bonavista Biennale a couple years ago, and uh, he created this space in uh, this building called the Factory in Port Union, Newfoundland. And it's a very small, tiny little spot. And the factory was a place what well, it was a factory, and they did things. They have the letterpress and and all sorts of things. Anyway, so he decided to create this work, and I'm saying this, I'm paraphrasing hugely. So Jerry, if I get any of this wrong, I apologize. But I know that he was creating objects that were like the objects that were already in the factory to kind of make people wonder like what existed there and what he created and added. And then was also um, taking photocopies of these to kind of further break down that reality of what is real and what is not there. Mm. And so this is one of the photocopies that I got to grab. And uh, so uh, Andrew and I both really want art up in our house, even when we are living transiently. So we definitely just grab this and we're like, oh, art to put up in the house. Fantastic. So <laughs> grab this and it does sit like we, we didn't frame it or anything. We kept it in its natural state, which was a photocopy and just put it up on the wall. There is, I mean, this is like sacrilegious to me, but there is a, a hole from a nail mark in it. We're yep. not being too precious with it. I don't think that Jerry would want us to be too precious with it. So we're just kind of like, like leaving it there. And I have no idea what this object is. I won't even lie to you. I don't know. I think it's beautiful. Like it I love the like texture. It looks like a scrap metal or something. But yeah. like also it looks like fabric. Yeah. 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 So I don't know what it is, but I adore it. I don't think we have to know what something is to love it. No, it's got, yeah. it's got good form and it's got good presence. And it has a similar quality to the others too where there's yeah. this um noise in the background it that is like cre i don't know just creating this soft environment for the object to live on yeah. the surface of i feel like i'm really seeing all these commonalities between the artwork that i own where it's just like 
interesting object that I'm really drawn to and noise. Yeah, you need a Morgan I'm... Wetterspoon now because that's like her whole jam. Yeah. I was gonna say, and like I'm looking at two other little works that we have on the wall right now and it's the exact same thing. <laughs> <laughs> it's all the same. Looks like but... a part of a hood. I mean, Yeah, Kevin, possibly. it does look like part of a hood. It does. It's so it, nice. It, it's, it's very portrait-like. It is, yeah. 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 And yeah. the photocopy is nice. And I like that you it don't is. have it framed, that it's just kind of put up and as is. Oh, there's hey. writing on the back. What? And I'm not going to lie to you. I didn't notice this until today. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> Andrew grabbed it and, like, kept it flat. And so I never knew what was behind it. And I really like it. Like, it says things like, I'll just read one of them. They, they seem like poems. Uh, you are quilting, sewing corners and edges, making stacks of cloth, cutting geometric shapes from bundles of scavenged garments. We have seen this before. And then I really like too, I would love to think that this was unintentional. Wait, where is it? That there's a spelling error that's circled in red pen. <laughs> Wait, it's a photocopy though. Yeah, I know. So I'd love to think that Jerry noticed that and said, the ah, jeepers and just went through and like circled all of them after. <laughs> I'd like to think that that's the it's case. Like I don't know if it's it like is. It's part but... of the signature. Oh my yeah. God, that's so funny. <laughs> that, that is the signature on the work, yeah. <laughs> that is amazing. I think yeah. we've like, I've seen a few shows where people have used photocopying. So like they photocopied something, then they turn that into a print, then they print it, then they photocopy the print, then they make a print of the photocopy and they go back and forth. Yes. And the quality shift through a photocopier is just, we had a photocopier for like a Super very, very brief period of time. <laughs> and their toner ink is such a satisfying ink. It really, oh my gosh, it is. It is. And um, it's even... I don't know, um, we do a lot of, like, I don't know, Andrew does a lot of photocopy work, and even just, like, when you take the stack out, and it's so nice and warm, and it has that smell to it. <laughs> yes, it's, it's so good. <laughs> <laughs> photocopy nerds, photocopy that's, like, so that's, like, one weird level of nerdy is when you're a, a photocopy nerd. <laughs> I feel like only teachers would sympathize with us. Yeah. Oh, 100 percent. Educators everywhere unite on the photocopy smell. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh well these shares were so good and it was Thank wonderful you. chatting with you thanks so much for joining us thank you so much for having me christine kyle i had such a wonderful time I, it's it's a great friday it's a nice end to the week you know like oh, sitting down is. having a tea and talking about art i can't i totally I agree this was my it. last meeting before the weekend and i'm so like this is such a great way to start the weekend oh well have a beautiful weekend yeah. and thanks everybody thank for you. joining us and participating and saying lovely things and yeah until next week thank you so much bye, bye.